Okay, so tell me a little bit about Central Washington Disability Resources. How did it get started? Okay, well, <clears throat> we've been around since 1981, uh, but we are a network of centers. And so after the 1974 Rehabilitation Act, uh, the bill passed and it authorized to award organizations that were led by people with disabilities to start up a center to provide services for people with disabilities. And so there is currently four centers in Washington state. And so we cover the central Washington area. So we do Kittitas, we do Yakima, we do Grant and um, Grant, Chelan and Douglas counties. Um, and the other centers cover other part of uh, Washington state. But in the whole United States, there are like over 400 centers um, that kind of follow our philosophy, which is the independent living philosophy. Uh, which is that regardless of people's disabilities, that we can still be as independent as we can be uh, in our communities of our choice. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about some of the services that you provide mm -hmm. at your organization. Yeah, so we here at CWDR, we actually have quite a few services, but the main ones, so all centers are required to have five core services. And so they are system advocacy, individual advocacy, um, information and referral. We do independent living skills training and we do peer support and then we do transition. So we could do youth transition or uh, institutionalization uh, transition. So like nursing home transition. So individuals that are living in um, segregated uh, communities back to their communities. And so within those core services, uh, we do many, many different things. And so some examples are um, to be eligible for our services, the individual just has to have a self-identified disability. So we do not require any sort of um, medication, not medication, uh, medical records. <clears throat> and so all we do is we ask them, do you identify as a person with a disability? And as long as they say yes, then they're eligible for services. So for our independent living skills training, um, that is more one-on-one -on -one services. And so we are gonna help the individual with whatever they need, as long as you know it's within our power. So some examples is we've had individuals wanting to learn transportation. So what we can do is we can go out and you know teach them how to ride the bus, you know, finding the nearest stop and, and riding the bus with them to teach them how to use it. So once they're comfortable, they can do it themselves. We also assist with uh, kind of job stick seeking. So if they're looking for jobs, we can help them create a resume. If they don't have anything to add on a resume, we can find volunteer opportunities. We can do kind of like the pre-employment side of it. Uh, so we can do like interview mocks and things like that. <clears throat> we can do assisting with like housing, uh, finding housing. So we can assist individuals like filling out the forms uh, for housing and making sure that it is complete and things like that and gather any other documents that they might need. And what makes our services different is we do not do it for the individuals, we do it with them. So our goal is to teach them, right? So that then when they're coming in here, they are gaining a skill so that in the future, they can do it by themselves with little to no assistance. Um, so that's kind of our independent living skills training. Um, we do so much more. I mean, it really depends what the individual kind of needs. You know, we've helped them apply for social security benefits, for food stamps, um, applying for uh, rental assistance. And like I said, so it really depends what they, they're looking for. We're going to be able to help them out. Um, we have a, a variety of other uh, services. We have different contracts. Uh, two of our contracts are directly to work with individuals around COVID-19. And so we host vaccine clinics around the five counties that we serve. Um, and we received additional funding to kind of do some incentives for those that are getting vaccinated. Um, and so we really try to you know, host vac vaccine clinics in accessible places. And so individuals that might not have access to them and are still interested in, in being vaccinated, uh, that they have access to the vaccine. 
Uh, we can provide companionship. And so if they're kind of feeling anxious, you know, to go and, and get vaccinated, we can go with them. If they don't have transportation, we can help them find transportation from their home to the vaccine site or pharmacy. Um, so a lot of things around COVID, you know, supporting them for those that do want to be vaccinated. Um, we're very pro-choice. And so it depends on the individual. Um, if they do, we're here to help. Um, we have other programs. Uh, we have a contract with the veteran directed care. Um, so that is a referral based. And so they send us um, individuals that uh, veterans that are eligible for the program to stay at home and hire a, a caregiver um, at their home. And so they can hire their spouse, their husband, uh, children, you know, whatever it may be, because we know there is a big gap on caregiving services right now. So this is an extra opportunity for, for you know, their, their relatives to make some money and do what they already do, you know, in their every day. Um, and to really prevent the veterans to be institutionalized and, and to be able to stay home with the support of their family. So that one's a, a really cool program. <clears throat> we have um, our youth transition, which is uh, specifically for youth 14 to 24. So we are there to support them, um, teaching them how to be better advocates and, and come up with a plan of what they're planning to do after they transition out of high school. Um, we've done things such as um, sitting on IEPs or 504 meetings with their parents to really help them understand what's going on to make sure that they're disclosing any accommodations they might need in the school. Um, but when they're ready to transition out, you know, kind of developing a plan. Are you planning to go to you know college? Well, what does that look like, right? Are you want to be more independent? Well, so you have to get a, a, a you know a place to live. But then we need to find some income. You know, are you looking for a job? Are you going to be applying for benefits? And so really supporting them on their step to transition. Um, we have another program, which is around specifically emergency preparedness. And so we do a lot of advocacy sitting on different committees to, you know, with the department, um, the fire department and the public health, both local and state, so that when there are emergencies in our community, they have somebody there that represents the disability community. So our motto is nothing about us without us. And so people should not be making decisions around individuals with disabilities without having a disability representative, especially when we think about emergency, um, you know, fires and things like that. They're not really looking at the accessibility side for somebody that has a physical or a mental or a cognitive disability. And so we do a lot of advocacy around that. Um, we have, these are more kind of local Kittitas County programs. Uh, we have a pool pass program. So we have a contract with the city to uh, award individuals that have disabilities and are low income to be able to utilize the pool uh, for free for a whole year, um, as long as they have a goal. So a lot of times, you know, they're feeling isolated at home, so they get to go to the pool and and meet new individuals, or um, they, they kind of need to work out and, you know, swimming and things like that um, might be best for them, depending on the disability that they have. Um, and so that one's available for all ages and Kittitas County only. <clears throat> we have a loan out program. So we have medical equipment in our building that individuals can come in and loan out, such as uh, raised toilet seats. We have wheelchairs, walkers, canes, um, more of the basic equipments. And so all of those are free for the community to come and and, and check those out and, and take them. And... <laughs> You know, like I said, there's a lot of different programs. Um, those are more of the direct services, but, uh, you know, I, as the director, we do a lot of system advocacy. So we're always sitting on different committees representing, like I mentioned, the disability community. Um, our services are available for individuals with all types of disabilities. So these could be physical, these could be mental, cognitive, vision, hearing, all of them were cross disability. And our services are also available for individuals all ages. Um, 
and they are available for individuals uh, with and without legal status. So we do not require, you know, a social security number or anything to be able to uh, get our services. That is not a question we ask. Um, and yeah, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's a lot of services. My yes. next question is, what, what sorts of stakeholders do you partner with to sort of, you know, <clears throat> help the disability community? Yeah, definitely. So I want to say a lot. So I, as the director, uh, sit on the EDI commission for Ellensburg. And so you are appointed by the city council to be part of that. And so we, I do a lot of advocacy around accessibility here in Ellensburg, making sure that, you know, we feel uh, like we are involved in our community and the changes that the city is making for us. Um, I am also part of the Department of Licensing um, Equity Quo uh, Commission. Um, so we've been doing a lot of work around um, accommodations when individuals are getting their driver license or IDs and all the forms and requirements that they have, making sure that they have interpreters available and not only in you know multiple languages, but also in alternate formats. And so what that means is, you know, if somebody is deaf and hard of hearing, that they have an ASL interpreter available. That if somebody has low vision, that they can provide information in Braille or, or you know, an alternate format, which could be larger print or things like that. So really trying to educate them to make sure that they are applying this to all of their Department of Licensing offices across the Washington state. <clears throat> I sit um, on the Department of Health uh, Commission as well. And so we do a lot of work around the health system. I mean, there's always room for improvement, right? Um, and we hear many gaps around, you know, how long is it taking to get appointments? How long is it taking for us to get our medications refilled or to seek, you know, counselors? You know, there's all this waiting list and um, us as individuals with disabilities, we're having to wait and be pushed out months to be able to get, you know, some sort of help around our diagnosis and things like that. And so we're doing a lot of advocacy. Um, and like I said, you know, being somebody with a disability myself, I really get to advocate and use my personal story as a person with a disability and as a part of a marginalized community, which is the Latinos in our community. Um, so those are some of the biggest um, partners that we see. Uh, every county has a different committee. So we're always working with like public health. We're working with other organizations, you know, there's work source and making sure that they are accessible, that they understand. We do a lot of education around disabilities and the right terminology for them to utilize uh, because a lot of times there's a lot of bias in the community and we do some employment education, right? So we want to encourage other workplaces that um, have the opportunity to hire somebody, you know, and has a disability that they know how to accommodate them. They know the resources that are available because regardless of somebody's disability, we can still do the work, right? We can still do the job. We just, it just means we do it a little differently and that is okay. You know, a lot of times we are afraid to mention that we have disabilities when we're getting a job and it shouldn't be that way. You know, so we do a lot of education with our employers. And so those are just some examples. Mm -hmm. uh, my next question is what impact does the CW CWDR uh, have on the greater disability community? Well, like I mentioned, we, our philosophy is the independent living philosophy. And there is, you know, 400 centers in the U.S. And so not only are we a center that is providing services in our counties, but we see it as a movement. So our centers, you know, they became federally funded by a movement, you know, um, I don't know if you're familiar with how the 1974 Rehabilitation Act got passed, but there was a group of individuals that went to the White House and they they waited it there. They wanted to be heard. You know, they spent the night over and, you know, it was individuals with all types of disabilities. You know, all these different organizations got together, the Black Panthers and things like that. And that's how they made um, the, the, the higher ups you know, listen to us. And so it's a movement of we are here and these are the gaps. And so, you know, we, when we do a lot of our work, um, we track everything. And so 
we send a report to the feds at the end of the year with all of our findings, our successes, our barriers, the struggles that we're seeing, and all the centers are doing so that we get this information back to the feds. And so when there's a new bill or something that is impacting our community, that they are getting actual real stories from us, you know, and that is super powerful. And like I said, we sit on different committees, um, you know, present representing the disability community. And so I find myself when I, I get somewhere, they see me and they see the disability community because I'm always advocating for it. And so all of our staff, you know, um, something that I forgot to mention was the feds require us to have 51% of staff with disabilities. And so it's staff with disabilities supporting individuals with disabilities and our board as well. And so right now, 100% of our staff have disabilities. We're very diverse. And so it allows us to learn from each other and to really represent the disability community. Mm -hmm. I guess my last question is, what do you do to create an accessible and inclusive world for everyone? Because I would imagine there are still some gaps in terms of like making, you know, our society more accessible and inclusive. So from your perspective, I'm wondering what can be done. Talk about it. We need to talk and talk and not stop. You know, I my my disabilities are more hidden disabilities, right? I don't have a physical disability. So a lot of times when I'm out and about, people can't see that I have a disability. But I love talking about my disabilities. I love to talking about the barriers that my disabilities um, impact me and how I'm, I'm able to overcome those barriers and still be an executive director, still work at an organization and still be able to do my job and still be able to support others in my community. So I think it really starts with us talking about it and being pride, having that prideful of having a disability. And, you know, I understand that there's still a lot of biases in our community, right? There might be times where we don't want anybody to know that we have a disability because we don't want to be treated differently. And, and that happens, but we have to make it more normalized. It is okay to have a disability. So the more we talk about it, the more we're pride about it, you know, I'm not going to hide my disabilities. It's part of me and they'll probably be part of me for the rest of my life, you know, and there might be new disabilities that come along as we age. Um, there's no reason to hide it. And I found myself, you know, when I'm out doing outreach and I'm talking about the organization, I'm talking about my disabilities, that there's other individuals that start opening up and telling me, you know what, I have this too, but I haven't told anybody else about it. And I'm like, why not talk about it? You know, be happy about it. It's part of you and it's what makes you, you. And so we should be, we should be okay with that. And we need to to spread that and minimize the biases around people with disabilities can't do this, they can't do that, because that's not true. Yep, that, that's not true. People with disabilities can do so much. Exactly.